Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Basement Machinist. Today, I'm going to be making for you guys a spindle thread protector. Now, there's many ways to go about it. You can use a large enough piece of stock, you know, drill it, bore it, and do the internal threading and all that good stuff. But what I'm going to do is uh, a little bit easier. Um, I do not have the proper tooling to do internal threading, and uh, I didn't want to purchase the tooling to do this one job this one time so what I'm what I did is I went to my local fastenal store and I bought an inch and a half by eight thread nut and I'm gonna thread this right onto the spindle and do all my turning right off the spindle now this nut they did not have any uh, unhardened nuts uh, in stock uh, I don't know if they actually carry them uh, in stock. I'm sure you can find some online somewhere. But this one, this particular one, uh, was hardened, and I annealed it in my uh, charcoal grill. I just put it in the grill, uh, covered it with charcoal, uh, lit the fire, and then I used a hair dryer to blow air to build up enough heat until the nut was glowing. Once the nut was glowing. I closed the charcoal grill and just let it cool down on its own, which took several hours. It took a long time for the heat to dissipate from this nut. So let's head over to the lathe and get to work. Okay, I got the nut on the spindle. And the first thing we're gonna do is make some facing passes on the front surface here. Should be my final pass. Okay, right, now what we need to do is we need to make the counter bore so that it, it seats up against the register of the spindle. And I got those measurements directly off the backing plate of my three jaw chuck. And you want to bore this out to an inch and a half, uh, slightly over an inch and a half, and then to a depth of 340 thousandths. have a five thousandths cleaning pass.
Okay, now I've got my compound set uh, for 45 degrees to put a chamfer on this inner edge. And that's good. Hey, right, just to make this uh, aesthetically pleasing, I'm just gonna turn down uh, to a nominal depth. Uh, not very much. And then I have the compound set to 20 degrees to put a 20 degree taper on one end. This isn't necessary. Like I said, this is purely aesthetics. So it's up to you if this is something you want to do. For those of you who are interested, uh, I took this down from this face, down 150 thousandths. <clears throat> now I'm just going to use a file to break this corner here. Now I have my compound set to 20 degrees and I'm going to pull a 20 degree taper from this inner corner on out to the outer edge. That should do it. Hey right, folks, I got the nut turned around. And I'm sure you noticed in the previous uh, scenes that the nut was about twice as long as it needed to be. So I just took it over to the bandsaw, cut it in half, and now I'm just making facing cuts until I get, until I'm flush with the spindle. Now I do have my uh, micrometer uh, carriage stop set so that when I get to zero, I will be a uh, couple thousandths heavy of the spindle this way that I don't crash into the spindle and accidentally face it off I got about 50 thousandths more to go This will be a 5,000 finishing pass. Okay, now I've got my compound set to 20 degrees like I did before and again I'm going to put an angle on the front part of it here. Again it's purely for aesthetics.
this will be my final pass. Get it off the lathe, take it to the bench, and have a look at it. Alright, folks, here it is. It's a relatively simple project. I just took a standard nut, I faced it off on one side, then I bored it to match the register on the lathe. And then I just did a little decorative turning here. I flipped it over. Well, I first cut off a piece of it with the bandsaw. And I faced it off flush with the spindle bore. And then I cut the another decorative taper. And that's all it takes. That's it. I'd like to thank you for watching Basement Machinist. I'll see you next time. <laughs>